It's time for the most controversial video I believe that I've done yet. This one's going to attract both Celtic and Rangers fans. It's one that I'm not looking forward to seeing the comments section and all the clips that I might get on Twitter. I kind of teased this on Twitter earlier today. Well, I say today, they'll be uploaded today. You're a mess, right? I kind of teased this yesterday on Twitter, um, saying that I was going to do this video and I asked for Celtic and Rangers fans' opinion on the best 15 players who have played for Celtic and Rangers over the last 15 years. It was met with debate in itself so this video is just going to blow everything out of the water. I have got a tier list of the players that I think are the best on both sides of Celtic and Rangers over the past 15 years well it's from the 2007-8 season and we're going to determine today who in what order is the best to worst. Now before we go any further and before people start throwing a wobbly in the comments and people are questioning my decisions and there's clips of me on Twitter and before everything else may I just quickly say this is my opinion it's not correct I'm not saying it is correct I'm not saying that you have to think it's correct, it's, it's honestly just my opinion. I'm a Celtic fan, of course there's probably going to be bias in there as well, I'm not going to ignore that. I'm going to try and go through it as unbiasedly and as honestly as possible, but just, just because this is me saying this doesn't mean you have to go off your head. I'm going to try and justify every single one of my picks, but it's just for a bit of fun, that's it. Can we remember, before we go any further, this list of players is what I believe is the best 30 of the past 15 years. All of these players are brilliant. They're on this list for a reason. So if they're in the bottom tier, I'm not saying they're bad. Of course they're not. They're not bad at all. They're brilliant. They've made it to this list. They're a quality player. One of the best that's played for Celtic and Rangers in the last 15 years. I'm just trying to order these 30 players. All of them in their own right and for their own reasons are brilliant football players and they're here for a reason. And we're going to try and talk about each and every one of them. So please, as we sit back for however long this video may last, enjoy it. Try your best to stay calm through it. If you want to skip to the end and see what the results are and then abuse me for what the final product is, please go and listen to the justification first. I hate people that do that, you know that. Jump right to the end and then they go to the comments and try and you know, listen to what I'm saying. There's a reason I've put them there. On that note, um, because this could be a long video, we may as well jump right into it. Let's not waste any more time. Oh, this is... Yeah, and you know what? Derby week. It's always interesting for the content. Um, I've already been clipped from my Duffy comments, my Griffiths and Defoe comments, my Season Predictions comments. So this is probably just going to add into that. Um, but I'm, I'm excited for it to say the least. So here it is. This is the list. These are the players that I believe are the best fairly to play for both Celtic and Rangers over the last 15 years. Now, I can already tell that Celtic fans are about to jump to a massive conclusion. Um, and they're going to say that Virgil van Dijk is not here. He's not on this list. Virgil van Dijk should be and could have been on this list. The reason I've not put him on this list is because a major part of the factors that decide where they go are derby appearances, derby games, how they performed in those games. Virgil van Dijk only played in one derby game. It was a dead rubber game. It was terrible. It was the worst derby game I think I've ever seen. Rangers had players that were just abysmal. I've decided to leave him out of this list. If Virgil van Dijk was in this, he'd be obviously up the top. He'd be somewhere up here anyway. Um, but I've left him out. He is not here. And nobody seemed to complain on Twitter, so I think we're okay, but this list is still a very good list of players, so how are we working it? So I've did the maths, and so that we're not just flooding players into it, like, good, like, we're just having, like, good fill to the, to the brim. Uh, we're going to try and, and keep it a strict number of players in each column. So we start with top three, who I think the top three best players are in the last 15 years in the Glasgow Derby, in the old form. I'm going to put in their quality, seven players can go in there, that's just a step below top three, they're the best as well, but not quite the top three. So that you could look at that as like the best tier. Good, it's in the name. They're good players, some of the better players. Um, and, and there's only seven that can fit in there too. Not bottom tier, it's that in between. They're not quite down the bottom. They're not quite up with the best. I mean, as I've already mentioned, these players are all incredibly good. Let's keep that in mind. All these players, look at all the faces in here. All very good players, so just keep that in mind. We're not saying any of these players are bad. Because then the bottom tier, worst of a good bunch. It says what it does on the tin. It does what it says on the tin, sorry. <laughs> um, they are the worst of a good bunch. They're all good players, but they're the worst of those good players. And by no means does that mean they're a bad player. I just don't think they're as good as the people above them. This is going to split opinion. This is going to be controversial. But it's exciting. So let's not waste any more time. And let's go in order of what the list has generated for us. It's got, I've kind of fixed that a little bit, so it's Celtic Rangers, Celtic Rangers, just to make a little bit of variety in the video. Let's not be here all day, though. Let's just uh, 
jump right into what is going to be very controversial. Right, Scott Sinclair starts us off, and I've done my best to take some notes for this video so that I can back up my points and give a justification for where I'm putting players. Scott Sinclair, 162 appearances for Celtic when he signed it, since we signed in 2016-17 till he departed, of course, last season. 62 goals in that time, a phenomenal record for a left winger. Unbelievable record, in fact, for a left winger, and it trumps another left winger that we'll come on to soon in this video. Treble Treble winner, of course, four Player of the Year awards uh, across all the different organisations and such and obviously very good the derbies as well he springs to mind that first season under Brendan Rodgers a very good player kind of dipped a little bit as it got to the end for now I feel like we need to put him in quality for now he might move down we'll do some jumping about and things where we might have too many players up there but for me Scott Sinclair screams quality was always good um, and Player of the Year awards say it all really his record says it all goal scorer Cup winner, league winner, multiple occasions. Shouldn't have left Celtic, but there we go. I put my quality from now. Might change. It's just early days. Alan Hutton, uh, I feel like... So, this is judged. So we've got to keep this in mind, right? We may as well throw this disclaimer in right now. We're basing this uh, from 2007-2008 onwards, the past 14-15 years. Alan Hutton only played one season from 7-8 forward, um, but he was mostly played for Rangers before that, but then again, a cracking player, we can't go he went to uh, Spurs for £9 million, a very good player, um, and got himself the move, I, I think for now, we'll put him in here, just because he only played the one season from 07-08 onwards, a very good player for Scotland as well when we needed him, um, had a decent enough career, a lot of people I was, I was speaking to said he only had really one standout season, CJ said that to me, so maybe he, he didn't deserve to be in the list, people were saying, but I put him in anyway because I thought he was a cracking player and one of Scotland's best young talents um, at the time. Not bottom tier will do for him now. Rangers fans are going to hate me because we've started off pretty poor. This guy has to go in quality, Aidan McGeady. I mean, the stats speak for themselves. His career um, kind of went a weird way after leaving Celtic, but the move that he got from Celtic spoke for itself. Um, his time at Celtic was unbelievable and from 07 away onwards he still made 141 appearances uh, and his whole time at Celtic 252 appearances, 37 goals 12 of the year awards so that's between you know player of the year, young player of the year, year team of the year 12 awards um, and winning 7 trophies, 4 league titles with Celtic also quality player moved away from Celtic for a fee of I think £11 million pounds. absolutely incredible footballer the McGeady spin technical ability was brilliant um, he's got to be up in quality, and Rangers fans might not, like, this is this is one that a lot of my audience might not be old enough to remember a lot of Aidan McGeady, even I am not really old enough to remember the best of Aidan McGeady maybe, um, and people will say, well you judged Hutton off 07-08, but, but McGeady still had a big impact, as I said, 100 odd appearances between 07-08 to his departure, for me has to go in quality besides Sinclair, maybe Sinclair drops down to good with that, but I'll keep him up here just now, and we'll do a little bit of footering about. James Tavernier, th this is a weird one, because before this season, I would have had him down in worst of a good bunch. Always been a decent enough player, but even Rangers fans were slaughtering him for a long time. Um, I would have had him down there, but this season, he's went out and showed why he's the captain of the team and how good a player he is. His stats every year are always impressive in terms of goals and assists. I mean, I know there's an the argument about he scores all penalties and all the rest of it, but he's still a very impressive player. I'm going to put him down here but for now, um, but he could very much move up to good. I think not bottom tier, above Alan Hutton for me for now. Um, this season, once again, as I said, he's been very impressive. But over the course of his time in Scotland, he has been a bit questionable. Um, and, and, and that was kind of mostly shown in the, the statement that he gave in the, the um, match programme last year when they were playing Hamilton and he was saying they feared teams and such he's pulled it back this season but does one season mean that he automatically jumps up to like here I know a lot of young Rangers fans a lot of Rangers fans will be saying maybe he deserves to be up in quality but he's not that great as of yet I think he has to do it a bit longer as I said he could move up to good but now I'm going to put him in not bottom tier Rangers fans who have clicked on this video and within the first four picks see two Celtic players in quality and two Rangers players not bottom tier trust me it will change very quickly I guarantee it will change very quickly. Um, Tom Rogic, now this is one, this is a safety player I think we can put down a little bit further. When you look at the players that are all around here, Tom Rogic probably doesn't go as high as a lot of the guys that we can we can see. Um, but Tom Rogic, of course, a very talented footballer and when he, plays, he played his best, he was one of the most um, entertaining and, and one of the technically best players in the country. Um, 
unfortunately his career has been kind of littered with fitness issues and injuries. Uh, 216 appearances, 40 goals for Celtic. A goal at Ibrox that was an absolute screamer and 14 major honours. We'll put him in good for now because the stats don't lie. They are brilliant stats for um, a player who has been in and out with injury. Um, the fact that he's came in and out of injury and still scored big goals, still be a good player, has to go in good for now. He has had impacts in the derby before. A lot of Rangers players have always spoken about the fear of him coming, or like Rangers fans have spoken about the fear of him coming off the bench. For now, he'll be good. But of course, we've only got seven spaces, so we might need to play around. The Kicha Jelovic, for me, automatically screams quality. Um, I would put him as far up there just now. Might have to drop down, but it goes as quality for me. Nikita Jelovic was someone who had such a short stint in Scotland, but a very good stint in Scotland. 56 appearances, 36 goals uh, a league in a League Cup, a couple of derby goals into the bargain. A very good player and someone I was jealous that Rangers actually had at the time um, because he was very good. Um, I really liked Nikita Jelovic um, from an opposition point of view. Very dangerous player, always feared him. For me, just now, it goes into quality, but can very easily move up. No, sorry, not move up, move down. <laughs> My favourite Celtic player of all time, perhaps, will go into good just now. Because there's a goalkeeper on here who will have to go above him, just being, to, to be unbiased, has to go above him. Now, if I was to pick, of course I'd pick Arthur Boric. Every day of the week, I'd pick Boric over the other goalkeeper on this list. But, um, there's a big conversation we had. Boric, with his time at Celtic, unbelievable. 221 appearances. Um, 130 of those appearances between the 07 08 and his departure. Um, six major honours, two Team of the Year appearances, and of course, uh, the Ibrox moment with the Champions flag. Some good derby appearances. For now, goes into good. He definitely goes above Rogic, right enough. Definitely goes above Rogic. I mean, if it was to be completely biased, and that was based off my own decisions, he'd be in top three. <laughs> But we can't do that, we'll put them down to good just now. It's it's at this point when I realised that top three and worst of a good bunch we might need to decide right at the end because I feel like it'd be harsh to say like shove somebody worst of a good bunch just now, maybe we pick six from this, the, the maybe like 14 or whatever here and we move them down, same with top three, we move up three from quality towards the end. A lot of people always do that when I see these on YouTube so we'll, we'll have a look. Up next, Ryan Kent, for me we'll put him and he's been very impressive in derbies, that's the thing. I have never been huge on as a player. Now, this is what I was talking about earlier. In terms of left-wingers, Scott Sinclair trumps him. For as much as Rangers fans might love Ryan Kent, right? We'll have a look at this. Ryan Kent, so far, has made 123 appearances for Rangers. Um, and, of course, that will go on. These num those numbers will go up. Whereas Scott Sinclair made 162. That's only 40 more. Uh, and, and Scott Sinclair has almost tripled the amount of goals as Ryan Kent, I think. 26 goals, 26 assists for Ryan Kent uh, so far in his Rangers career. But, of course, the stats don't mean everything. Off the ball, a very talented player. Now, if it was up to me off the top of my head, I, I would put him in not bottom tier for now because I believe there's a lot of Rangers players down there that are better than him but his derby influence has certainly been been very good he's certainly always turned up in the derbies um i think i'll move him in good for i'll put him in good for now and i might move him to i everybody will know i've never been a massive fan of kent I, there's clips of me saying how overrated kent is but over the past year he has proved me wrong on several occasions and Europe has been a very dangerous player too. Um, and he's probably going to get a move from Rangers at some point. So we'll put him in good for now. A lot of people like, you're putting him in good, you're putting Tavernier on the bottom tier. Kent hasn't really been bad since signing for Rangers, whereas Tavernier I think took time to get going and was very questionable at points. I I, it's a hard one between those two. I'm going to leave it like that for now. It might not finish that way. Got McDonald, brilliant player. Loved him. Skippy. Uh, of course, Rangers fans also love him um, for the, the helicopter Sunday moment. 117 appearances for Celtic. 59 goals. Part of the striking tenure. Three derby goals into the bargain. Um, I think for now... He would probably top, not bottom tier for me. There's a lot of strikers in there who are better than him. Like Jelovic. Um, a few guys down here that I can see that probably go above Scott McDonald. Um, so I'm going to drop him into not bottom tier for now. I love him. Big fan. Um, a, lot, a couple of people mentioned when I put up the tweet that he maybe shouldn't be in here as part of the overall 30. Um, I think he deserves to be there, personally. Um, very good in Europe as well. Well, I say very good in Europe, but a couple of big performances from him. So I will put him in there. Davey Weir. Um, I'm going to put him in good just now, and I'm going to put him in between Boric and... and, and um, Rogic because he was a very good defender and someone who could maybe even have an argument for moving up I mean he won the player of the year award in 2010 when he was much older than a lot of people He had a very uh, lengthy career at Rangers for being quite old at the time um, And he, he always done well. I think a couple of dodgy moments, but captain decide 
Um, a player who was really reliable for Rangers, I think Rangers fans really respected um, at his time, 214 appearances, the majority of them coming from 07, 08 onwards, he started in 06, 07 for Rangers, um, a player of the years, I said 2010, 8 major honours, you could argue there's a case to put him up in, in quality, but there's certainly... You know, it doesn't. When you think of quality players, Weir doesn't come in your mind straight away. It doesn't come in mind certainly. So I'm going to put him in good for now. Could always move up. Musa Dembele. Ah, oh, he just he just goes in there. I'm not hearing otherwise. He's the best player to play in Scotland from Henrik Larsson. When you're talking about a, a technical point of view, an ability point of view, um, very few have been that level playing in Scotland, and that's going to show as he's moved on. Single-handedly knocked Man City at the Champions League last year with Leon, get to the semi-finals. They had a very good career in France as well at such a young age. He's now playing for Atletico Madrid, for God's sake. Um, I know he's not quite had a great start to his Atletico career, but he's playing with Luis Suarez, this team. He's not going to get ahead of Luis bloody Suarez, is he? He's just unbelievable. He jumps right to the top, for me. He's quality, he's unbelievable. He's just un, un, unreal. One of the Watching him was a spectacle at times. Um, and people can go on about the quality of the opposition in that face in Scotland, but th th it's different with Moussa Dembele. Absolutely different story. And he's showed that as he's left. And I know people will say there's a bias for Moussa Dembele, but people have got to realise he is top class and he'll show that in his career because he's got to have an amazing career. Um, and it's just getting started, you could say, uh, with the move to Atletico in this past window. So he, he jumps into quality. Can I also just quickly mention that in the two seasons he played, he got seven derby goals. Seven derby goals in the two seasons. Unbelievable record. Stephen Davis, uh, he goes into quality, absolutely. And you can see he's maybe up here as well, up the top end of quality. I mean, the stats speak for itself. I know I said stats don't mean everything, but him, he's just 315 appearances across both tenures at Rangers so far. He's still doing it at the age he is just now. Had a very good spell at Southampton, of course, when he captained the Premier League side. Um, nine honours, I think, at the moment, including this year's title. Big part of their 55th title campaign. Um, and, and, and the most capped British player of all time. Uh, an amazing football player. Uh, and people have asked this question before. Who's the one Rangers player you always wish was at Celtic? I've always said Stephen Davis. Brilliant player. It drops right into quality for me. Um, and there's no argument about that, I don't think. Callum McGregor, I'm going to put in good because I think he's better than Rogic. Um, and I think he's had more of an impact than Rogic as well. So... If I've got Rogic in there, I've got to put him in there. And McGregor is just brilliant. This season he has struggled, don't get me wrong. But then, you know, if, if, if Rangers fans want to use that as an argument, then Tavernier, for example, has struggled for two, three seasons. Whereas McGregor's only struggled for one. He's been Mr. Consistent mostly for Celtic throughout his entire time in the first team. Um, so he drops right in there. Brilliant player. Always been good in derby days, apart from this season, as I mentioned. Well, he's not been overly bad, um, but he's certainly, he's certainly a good player. We all know that. So I'm dro dropping it good for now. A lot of people might argue he's up here. I'm going to keep him in here for now. I'm going to keep him in good. Sasa Papac, a player that I actually always rated at Rangers. I think I might put him in good just now. I might. I, he might move down. I always rated him. Always thought he was a good player. Uh, solid fullback. But there's another left back we're going to come on to who is better. So right now I'm going to put him in good. And, 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 you know, I just feel like he was always someone who was reliable once again for Rangers. Someone who always had a, a kind of threat in the team going down that left-hand side. So aye, he, he's the sixth player in good just now. Wow, quite even in there, as you can see. We've got three Rangers players, three Celtic players. People say I'm biased. I'm not biased. I, I'm a bit biased. <laughs> Got Brown, I mean, yep, he's, he's up in quality. And, and let's be honest, he's probably going to go up here. Um, but we'll, we'll, as I said, we'll design the top three at the end. Brown's in quality. Conversational. What do I need to say? <laughs> I don't need to say anything about Scott Brown to justify him being in quality. Rangers fans will like to like to be picky about it all, but let's be honest, we can all sit down and say he's just a, been an amazing footballer, uh, an amazing leader, an amazing captain. Everything about Scott Brown just oozes class. Um, as much as Rangers fans hate him, as much as the nicknames they might give him, and he's had a say on Derby Day before as well, he's, he's in quality, there's no argument there. Morelos, for me, is better than Kent, so I'm going to move Kent into the bottom tier and put Morelos in here just now. Now, we could obviously keep Morelos in here and make that a 7, but I, imag I imagine that Kent will have to move down for someone anyway. Morelos, yes, he's only got one Derby goal, but how good a player he's been for Rangers and, and how consistent he's been for Rangers is impressive, very impressive. He got his first Derby goal, of course, but even... Um, Without derby goals, he's still been important for Rangers and Derby Day and how they play. And their derby wins off the ball, he's been very impressive. Um, so we've got to put Morelos in a good for now. I don't know if many people would say he's maybe even better than, than Jelovic. For me, Jelovic was better than Morelos. 
Um, I think Jelovic proved that with his move to the Premier League, playing for both Everton and West Ham. Morelos might get that chance, but right now I don't see him going beyond Rangers too much. He will go beyond Rangers, will get a move one day, but I think Jelovic was just a better footballer than, than Morelos. He certainly moves up this list. Uh, if we were to put it in order, he, you know, you could certainly maybe even put him like up here or something like that. Morelos goes into good, definitely. I just don't think he's quite Nikita Jelovic. And Ward, he needs to go into quality, he does, doesn't he? He does have to go in quality. And he's one of those ones as well against Rangers has shown that so many times. An amazing footballer. And think of his age. Think of his age. He's still got two more derbies as well to add to his derby tally. He needs to go in quality. He's one of the, one, once again, one of the best footballers this country has seen since Henrik Larsson. A lot of people actually think he's better than Dembele. He's got to go in quality. Even as a Rangers fan, you've got to admit, his ability is unreal. And his stats, once again, got to show it. I think he scored 80-odd 80, 80 goals in, in three seasons being the main striker. Not even three, is it? It's three seasons being the, the, the first-choice striker. 80-odd goals. That is... That is madness. He's been here obviously four seasons, but three of those only being the first choice striker. And even that, his first season, still running out the team with the likes of Griffiths being there. Absolutely drops into quality. He's just unreal. Unreal. See, this is where it gets hard because we're going to have to start moving players around. We've filled out seven spaces in here. Now, we have we can afford to put ten people in here because we'll be moving three up. But this is where it starts to get hard and we've got to start being realistic with who drops down tiers and such. This is the tough part. Gallows Krilla, player of the year. No, um, the famous saying, Quayla was a very good player from what I remember that one season anyway. I, I, apart from that, I, I don't know if he's, I'd, I'd rate him as highly as some of the guys in good. I think he goes into not bottom tier. He was good, earned himself a move to Aston Villa, played under Mark O'Neill, was also good there. But when I look at players in the good tier, I don't think he was better than Parpatch. Personally, Rangers fans might not agree. I don't think he was better than Parpatch. I don't think it, it, the long. I think longevity would suggest that Weird was better. Rogic is a better footballer. McGregor is. I think Morelos has been more important than what Kamila ever was to Rangers. I'd put him in not bottom tier for now. Um, just because I feel like the players above him are all better. I may be wrong. You may not agree with me. But I just think every player up here is better than him. I think Kent's better than him. I think McDonald's better than him. I mean, some people might even say Tavidier's better than him. I think a lot of Rangers fans would, just off this season alone. And then Hutton, he's right back, you know, another right back at Rangers. Three right backs in a row there. Could argue be better than him too. It's a tough one. I think he goes into not bottom tier for now. He's got to go. He's got to walk. He's got to get to fall. Right, this is, see, that's what I mean. Kieran Tierney, once again, has to go into quality. He, he has to. I mean, I mean, I know he was. He had a very short career in Scotland, um, only kind of two, three seasons in the Celtic first team, um, before he got his move to Arsenal. But he's one of the best players that this this country's ever produced, um, in in recent times anyway. I know he's been struggling with injuries and he just fancy oh biscuit ankles, biscuit hips, and all the rest of it. But he's unbelievable. He showed that in international breaks. He showed that Arsenal Arsenal fans are raving about him. His quality is obscene. Kieran Tierney's quality is obscene. I'd maybe put him above Edouard, I don't know. It go, it, it, there's no conversation, it goes into quality. Um, your Player of the Year awards, Young Player of the Year awards, sorry. Team of the Year awards, uh, being here for once again, a, a, an invincible treble, a double treble. Um, it's a guy who bleed in Celtic, loved a Derby Day appearance too, was very, very reliable in Derby Day and very influential. Easily goes into quality for me. I must admit, and I don't know if Rangers fans might rate him as highly as me, I think Kenny Miller, you could argue, goes into quality, but I'm going to put him in good for now, because there's a couple of guys I'm looking at, and I'm like, right, okay, they go into quality. Kenny Miller, brilliant footballer, long career, done it for both Celtic and Rangers. Um, I, I, it's just madness how much football he, he actually played um, in his career. And he was always someone who, even when Rangers were poor coming back into the league, I was... I felt a threat with, um, and one of, once again, one of the best players this country's produced, brilliant footballer, 263 appearances for just Rangers, 103 goals, obviously it kind of mixed spells at Rangers coming and going a few times, um, and then obviously a goal for Celtic in the derby as well, very influential in derby day, you could make the case he goes up here, I'm going to keep him up there for now, I don't know if many Rangers fans will agree with me. Because a lot of Rangers fans believe like, well, Morelos is better, but Kenny Miller was 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 a special Scottish talent, I think. I'll put him up there for now. He'd probably end up dropping into good. But I'm putting him up there for now. 
Mikael Lustig, I loved him, I absolutely did, but he is in not bottom tier for now, and he'll probably end up at the bottom, I loved him, I, an, an idol, an icon, and he'd done it for so long for Celtic, season after season after season, he was here for what, how many of the nine in a row he was here for, I think, was it eight, eight of the nine in a row, Mikael Lustig was here for, goals on Derby Day as well, of course, moments on Derby Day, um, with the hat and all the rest of it, but I mean, you look at the players uh, that are above him as well, you, you can't say that Mikael Lustig was better than the guys I think above him, I'd maybe drop him in there, um, if you want to put, I, I'm not too fussed about the order of how they are in each tier, um, but you, yeah, he's not bottom tier for now, not bottom tier, uh, because he's not exactly special, he was solid, and then you've got to remember a lot of people, a lot of people preferred Matthews to him at a point, and then towards the end, people complained about him, um, people thought it was too slow, I was one of those people, so he probably is in there to, to keep it fair, don't think there's any conversation about Alan McGregor, he goes up here, um, quality, and as I said earlier, I love Arthur Boric, and if I was to personally pick, I'm picking Arthur Boric every single day of the week, but it would be criminal, it would be biased of me to say that he, uh, that Boric is above McGregor, he's the best keeper this country has perhaps ever produced, maybe with the exception of Andy Gorham, um, he is quality, and he's 40 years old, and he's still unbelievable, the last few derbies, I've been like, how can we beat him, he's, there's no conversation, I mean, his, his record at Rangers speaks for itself as well, 12 major honours at Rangers, you're talking, what, 139 appearances in his most recent spell, 278 in the first spell, that's over 400 appearances for the club, yeah, but he's up there, he is, he, he definitely is, he, he, he might even come close to being a top three. Georges Samaras. Oh, he, he's just up there for now. He, he's just a player. Rangers fans probably don't know how good this guy was because they wouldn't watch him week in, week out. Um, and even again, like, he's, he's just such a weird player because one week he played like Cristiano Ronaldo, Lionel Messi, the best player in the world, and then one week he would be like the worst player you've ever seen. <laughs> for that reason, you could probably put him down here. He's up there. I'd take him over Ken any day of the week, man. I would. He scanted Alan McGregor at Ibrooks. Amazing. Um, and someone who was just an entertaining player, uh, as, as much as being a donkey, he was a fascinating breed of player. He might end up moving down to the bottom tier. One of my favourite players, like probably a top three or five Celtic player in my lifetime um, that I've personally enjoyed. He was just special, Samaras. <laughs> Chris Boyd. Someone who, for me... Of course, an incredible goal scorer. One of the best strikers the country's ever seen. An amazing record. Would I put him above Kenny Miller? Oh, it's a hard one. I don't know. Would I put him above Miller? Boyd was a record-breaking goal scorer. One of the best strikers I've already mentioned. A goal machine. Um, and, and done it in several spells as well for Rangers. 208 appearances while also scoring, what's that, 113 goals. Uh, I thought there was more goals than that. Hmm... Chris Boyd, weird one, weird one, I'm gonna, I've got it, oh, I don't know, that is weird, it's the fact that his Derby Day impact, I don't think was as good as what his record suggests, oh, it's a weird one, I'll put him in good for now, I'll put him in good for now, it's a weird one, because I don't know where I'd place him in good, I'm not bothered about the order of where they go in, in a specific rows, but I put him in good for now, I'll just leave him in there for now. Pedro Mendes, another guy who was a good player, solid player. A lot of Rangers fans wanted him here, but it goes in not bottom tier for me just now. You look at the players once again, up here and here. Mendes wasn't on that level. Very short. I think he was only at Rangers for about 18 months, and he was good, and he did have an impact in derbies as well, but you look at the players above him, and for me, he was not better than them. He really wasn't. A lot of people complain about how slow he was at times in the midfield. He only made 45 appearances, three goals, eight assists. Yeah, it doesn't really scream like he should be very high up the list. A player with really good quality, and I know he's one of those players that stats shouldn't really um, impact his placement here because I think it's a, a guy who doesn't really get in and involved with the stats. It's more of what he does outside the stats at Mars, as a central midfielder especially. But, yeah, he's certainly, you know, he's no better than Cal McGregor. Uh, in terms of what he did at Rangers anyway, not better than Tom Rogic, not better than any of those guys I see above him to be honest, so he's there for now. This is getting so difficult isn't it, because I'm looking at players we're going to have to move about and keep strict numbers and places. James Forrest for me just now uh, will probably go into, into good and end up dropping down, being at Celtic for nine in a row, um, he's been here for every single one of those seasons, um, he's been decent enough on derby days, I think a lot of people have been, uh, a bit, it's a bit weird for him, disappears sometimes, but he has scored in derby days, um, he's a weird player because 
he's he's took so much abuse at times, and maybe maybe that justifies him going down here. Maybe it does. Maybe it justifies him going down there. Because it's like, as much as we all love the fact he's back, and as much as we love him the last couple of years, he's been good, but apart from this season because he's been injured, we can't ignore the fact that the amount of abuse he's taken and a lot of people want him to go and be replaced and that we can't ignore that for now. It's an honour being in this list altogether, top 30 old fun players. Um, but I'm going to put him in, in not bottom tier for now. I know, contra- controversial. You can actually see me getting quicker with every player I go through because I'm very... Very kind of worried about how much time I spend on this video. So yeah, if you're wondering why we're flying through the last ones, that is why. Nacho Novo, uh, yeah, good is full for now. So Nacho Novo has to go in here because he's not, he's not better than what, I, I don't know. Nacho Novo is one of those players who I feel like is, is like Samaras in a sense where a lot of Rangers fans will love him as a kind of cult figure and such. But I don't think he was as good as Boyd. I don't think he was as good as Miller. Personally, this is, of course, my opinion. He was always a player who I always thought a bit threatened by and, and scored goals in derbies. But I think Morelos has eclipsed him. He's in good. I don't think he's quite up there. I don't think so. He's a guy who Rangers fans love, and rightly so they'll love him. Um, but I don't think in terms of quality that he gets up that high. Nakamura, go bang, right into quality, son. Right into quality. Once again, another guy who, technically speaking is one of the, the best players that we've seen on these shows. He was something special. Um, free kick specialist. Scored what I think is the best RB goal I've ever seen in my lifetime. Um, and was just a unbelievable talent. Un- and he was actually quite old as well at the time, remember. He's still going, man. He's putting the arse right out it. Um, he goes right at the quality. His talent was, was special. Very much so. If I was to put him in order, he probably moves up. He probably ends up, like, here or something like that. But we'll, we'll keep going. We've only got two more players to speak about before we have to do a little, a little bit of rejigging. Barry Ferguson, yep, he's, he's right up here. But let's not lie. Let, let's let's not lie. Barry Ferguson, one of the best players to ever play for Celtic and Rangers, an amazing captain. The only downfall Barry Ferguson has in this video is the fact that from 07 08 onwards was probably not his best spell at the club. Um, of course, Celtic won the league 07 08, but yeah, but they got to UEFA Cup final. They won the league 08 09, but then he leaves. He's only there for kind of two seasons. Um, but it's Barry Ferguson. And if I put him anywhere else, I would be slaughtered. I would be absolutely crucified. I can't take away how good a player he is. Um, absolutely up there. He goes right into quality. I mean, how many appearances did he make for Rangers over these two spells? It must be upwards of like 200, 300 appearances. Brilliant player, right in equality. And finally, Gary Hooper. Um, he drops into not bottom tier for now. Before we sort it out, before we try and figure out who goes where. Um, once again, a lot of players above him in that list are simply better than him. Love Hooper, absolutely amazing. Um, had a bit of a spell, of course, at Celtic when Rangers were out the league too. So he didn't get as many derbies under his belt as maybe we'd like. But he was certainly there for some entertaining derbies. And, and had a say on derby day, um, as Ian Crocker would put it. I love Tupac, absolutely unbelievable. But to put him in the same tier as I think Morelos um, and, and 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 Boyd, who have got better goal scoring records, would be quite biased of me. Right, so this is where we have to sort it out. At first glance, I think I've done a very fair job here. I think I've been incredibly fair. I think I've put bias aside. If you just look in quality, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven uh, Celtic players. There are one, two, three. For five Rangers players. So I read a little bit. Good. One, two, three, four Celtic players. One, two, three, four Rangers players. And not bottom tier. One, two, three, four, five, six Rangers players. One, two, three, four Celtic players. So for being a Celtic fan, you can see that there's definitely a little bit more Celtic bias to an extent. But in my justification, I feel like I've been incredibly fair. And people will disagree. That's it. It's opinion, isn't it? It's opinion. It's how you see things. It's how you perceive it. How, what you see week in, week out. And I see Celtic players more often, so it's going to happen. But here is the hard part now. We've got to move players around so that we, we stick to the we stick to the uh, the numbers that I said at the start. Right, so we'll start with the not the bottom tier, moving people into the worst of a good bunch. Now, in good, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. We have 8 players in there, but we have 12 players in quality, and we can only have 10. So who are we moving out of quality? To move into good. We need to move two out. Kenny Miller. He drops into good for me. Um, and I think in the issue of fairness. Oh, I don't know who else drops out. Who else drops out? It's actually so difficult. It's so All of these players deserve to be in quality. 
Every single one of them. <sighs> Tierney maybe moves into the top of good. Just because he wasn't there as long as the rest of these guys up here. Maybe that's the, that's the only reason I can I can think of giving. So that leaves us with 10 in there, I think. There should be only 10, because we're only allowed to move 3 up here and have 7 in here. I feel like a lot of Celtic fans are going to crucify me for having Jelovic in above Kieran Tierney. But out of the issue of fairness, I feel like he's only allowed... Now we're only allowed 7 in here, so this is where it gets hard again. <laughs> Off the top of my head, that suggests we move Rogic down, Papac down... I feel like we're going to move Samaras down. I feel like we're going to move Samaras down below Boyd because it would just be, it would be unfair of me to say someone who has that many goals to be below George Samaras just because I love Samaras. You know what I mean? So I feel like that's fair. I feel like that. So that's that's seven in there. That's seven and good, right? I think that's a good Tierney, Miller, Boric, Morelos, McGregor, Weir, and Boyd. I think that's a good seven to have in good. Um, I don't think any of these players, like the, the one that I'm tempted to have the most up there is Samaras. I want Samaras up there, I really do, but I don't know if I can justify it. Now we're only allowed seven and not the bottom tier though, and there wasn't a good bunch. People are going to crucify me for this part. Right, and the issue of fairness, Lustig goes in there, and I think Hooper goes in there. I, I would say, and I think Novo goes in there, I think Mendes goes in there. There's four straight away, who I think go in the worst of a good bunch. These are all good players, and I feel incredibly harsh putting anyone in. Hutton... I'm going to put in Hutton. I'm going to put Hutton in. Just purely because... From 07 away... Oh, but then, that, that Fer then Ferguson comes into that criteria as well. But he only had one. Yo, Hutton goes in there. I'm sticking by it. Hutton goes in there. Hutton is in the worst of a good bunch tier. And then who else joined? I think I'm going to put Kuala in. I think that is what I'm going to do. And I think that's fair. So if we have a quick run through before we decide our top three Derby players since 2007... Brown, Dembele, Ferguson, Davis, McGregor, Nakamura, McGeady, Sinclair, Jelovic and Edward. I think those are the best seven since 2007 to play for both of these teams. I think. I, I would suggest so. I think they're better than everybody below them. The, the, Tierney is the one I feel harshest dropping out. I feel really harsh dropping out Tierney. I honestly do. I almost want to substitute him for someone there. Um, but I just don't know if I can justify saying he's better than Nakamura. He's better than McGeady, better than Sinclair, and Eduardo Cossi will be, I think, in his career, perhaps better than all those players. But for what they've done at Celtic, do you know what? Actually, Tierney's coming out, Sinclair's gone into good. Fuck it. There we go. I just, Tierney was special. Tierney was honestly special for his age and everything. You've got to remember, wait, Sinclair was in the... T I'm putting... Yep, yeah, I'm doing that. I'm doing that. Tierney's gone in. Final decision. Tierney has gone in quality. He deserves... To be in quality. It would be harsh not to have him in quality. And good, I've got Scott Sinclair, Kenny Miller, Arthur Boric, Alfredo Morelos, Callum McGregor, Davey Weir and Chris Boyd. Um, I feel once again they're better than everybody below them. I feel harshest dropping out Samaras. But I feel like that's pretty good. I think a lot of people be, maybe think I'm controversial with having Miller, Weir and Boyd in there. But guys who've done it, um, they've done it. So I think they go in. I think they drop into good. Not the bottom tier. Samaras, Rogic, Papach, Forrest, Kent, McDonald and Tavernier. That's what I'd say is not bottom tier. They're not quite the players above them, but they're not the players, but they're better than the players below them. I think that one is also fair. I think I'm looking at it and I think this is an incredibly fair list, to be honest. I think it's incredibly fair. And in the bottom, Carlos Coelho, Mikael Lustig, Gary Hooper, Nacho Novo, Pedro Mendes and Alan Hutton. Now a lot of people will be saying, oh, you, the, 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 Coelho was quality, he was playing in the year, blah, blah, blah. Hutton was, was fantastic, all the rest of it. Yeah, but I can also use that. Lustig done it consistently for a long time. It was key to winning, what, eight league titles. Um, well, not key to maybe the last couple, but it was still key. And, you know, I think that... I think that is very fair. I think everything I have done there is very fair. Now, big disclaimer and, and bold giant writing, the order, I may have at the start, but the order of what I've put them in the rows doesn't matter. I'm not even going to... So I'm not saying that Sinclair's better than all these guys. I'm not saying that Simon has to be better than all these guys. I don't care. I, I, I can't be bothered going through that much effort. I've just put them in the rows. But I've kind of spoiled my top three in that sense because I think the top three for me, Scott Brown... Barry Ferguson and Moussa Dembele. I think that right there is your top three. I think that's it. Scott Brown 
is Scott Brown. I, as I said earlier, I don't need to explain why Brown's here. Rangers fans, you might despise him, but you despise him because of how successful he's been, how good he's been, not got the Rangers, how he's performed against Rangers, all these things add up. It's not just because it's Scott Brown. I know he's got a face you love to hate, but it's Scott Brown. 22 major honours since signing in 07 08. Madness. Madness. He, he's, he's there. Ferguson, Ferguson. I know it from 07 08. He only had those two seasons, but I will be cruci- I feel like it's either him or Davis. I feel like it's got to be him or Davis, but I'm going to put Ferguson because I feel like Rangers fans might hate me for it. So I'm putting him in my top three. And I know that kind of backfires on what I said for perhaps Alan Hutton. But other players, but still, I'm putting Ferguson and Moussa Dembele because Moussa Dembele, in terms of technical ability, I will stick by it as the best player to play in Scotland since Henrik Larsson. There's a reason his career's shaping out to be as good as it's been because he's that good. So that there for me is my tier list from 07 08 onwards. That right there is the best. Oh, that's it's gonna cause so much controversy. It's gonna. I think I've been incredibly fair. I think I have. And here, two Celtic players, one Rangers player. And here, three Rangers players, four Celtic players. And here, three Celtic players, four Rangers players. So I've actually got more Rangers players in there. And here, one, two, three, four Celtic players, three Rangers players. And here, four Rangers players, two Celtic players. I think I've been very, very fair with how I've put this out. I think you can look at that and say, do you know what, that, that is a fair assessment from his point of view because he's a Celtic fan and all this, I have tried to be as unbiased as possible. If I was biased, trust me, if I was wanting to do it my way, all the Celtic players would be at the top. <laughs> but I've not done it like that. There is your answer. God, that was long. So that does it. That is the, the tier. That's it. Let me know what you think. We've been talking for a long time. I'm just going to end it and I'm going to let you all go away in the comment section and do what you want. Like, comment, subscribe. See you all next time.